Good evening, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to present this evening's speaker, Rotarian David Kirkaldi. Rotarian David has been a member of the Rotary Club of Grand Cayman since 1995. He has served as the club's president in 2005-2006. Currently, he is serving as the assistant governor for the Cayman Islands. David is a benefactor, the Quest Society Level 1, and a major donor Level 1. Currently, he is serving as the chairperson for District 7020 Endowment and a major gift subcommittee. Outside of his 25 years involvement in Rotary, David is the president of several family owned businesses in the Cayman Islands. David is married to Christina. Together, they have two children son, Ryan, 21, and daughter, Taylor, 19. Please help welcome our presenter this evening. Rotarian, David Kirkaldi. Thank you very much. I was listening to that introduction thinking that sounds like a heck of a guy. I don't know, it <laughs> certainly didn't sound like me. Um, first of all, I'd say thank you so much for that kind introduction and, um, and to your club for, for inviting me and again, extend my apologies for the, the late start on your speaker. Um, Angela, thank you for, for, for reaching out. Um, uh, to the president, thank you for the opportunity. Of course, there is Rotary Royalty in, in the house this evening, and so DGE uh, Louis. Um, my only upset that you are there and we are not together is that traditionally when we are together, it is at a district conference and there is a large round of Gouda. And uh, I'll, I'll just have to uh, add one on to the list for the next time. I just finally thank you also, uh, AG, for, for joining the call this evening. It's, it's wonderful to see friends from, from around the district uh, joining this call. Um, so if you just give me one quick moment, I will share my screen. Um, one moment, here we go. And... Okay, can everybody see that okay? Fantastic. So this is the topic tonight, endowment and major gifts. Um, I will say right off, the, right off the start of this presentation that if you have already achieved a major gift level, such as a, a benefactor, sorry, not benefactor, the um, bequest society level one or a major donor level one, two, three, I thank you so very much. But the one thing I have learned from having done about 20 of these so far is I will not be naming any names because it will all be for naught because I will forget the one person who is on the call that I forgot to name. So I just extend my sincere thank you for your generosity to the foundation and um, your, our appreciation for that. What would I like to try and do today? I want to make sure that you understand what my district role is, have a quick overview of the foundation gifts that are covered by this district subcommittee. What are the different types of gifts that we're talking about? about how and why I think you should support the foundation and specifically within the foundation, the endowment fund. How can you give within your means right now? We're talking sometimes about larger sums of money, but I want to be completely clear that to me, any amount that is given from the heart to the foundation is a gift of love that is as appreciated as any large sum. And I want to also help you understand how you can plan for legacy giving. Of course, we'll end with a quick recap and have the opportunity for any questions. You've covered very well who I am. Really, if you've met me anywhere, I'm not the kind of person that sort of goes on about the different levels and whatnot. I have only put that in this uh, quick bio, just so that you know I'm not, I, I'm standing before you, a person who has put his money where his mouth is, and I have made that commitment over my 25 years in Rotary to the foundation and to the endowment fund of the foundation. And it's something I'm extremely passionate about, but it's also not something I dwell on. So what's my role? Endowment and major gifts subcommittee. Uh, DG Charles said in the way that only DG Charles can, which is sort of like a telling you said, uh, would you like to do this? And I said, yes, of course, happy to help. 
I then went back up to the hotel room and looked up what the heck I'd gotten myself into because I'd never heard of this subcommittee before. Uh, but essentially, I my role is to assist uh, presidents, incoming administrations. So you would have had your elections uh, most likely by now, and you're starting to put together next year in Rotary Club Central. There will be goal setting within some of these areas that touch on uh, the endowment fund and major giving. And I'm here to assist you with that understanding who may be members that, uh, that, could, that could be falling into that category. I'm here to help inform you of opportunities and resources that are available that maybe you're not aware of. Work with presidents to make sure that donors are properly recognized. It's uh, quite shocking sometimes that people reach a significant level of their rotary um, giving and it is uh, quite often it's handed off in a very offhand way. And, and really this is a significant milestone and ought to be recognized as such. And I wanna make sure that presidents know that they can reach out to me and gain any assistance they may need in properly framing that event. And essentially I'm just here to work with, uh, with any, anything to do with the endowment side of the foundation. And I encourage you to reach out so what are the types and levels? At the most basic, $1,000 US or more outright into your estate plan or the, as a benefit or, or directly into the endowment fund as a, as, a, as a gift now makes you a benefactor. And the recognition level on that is that, uh, that sash, which can be pinned below your uh, Paul Harris Fellow or your regular uh, rotary pin. Next level up in terms of recognition would be major donor. So Paul Harris plus one, two, three, four, et cetera. You reach $10,000 in cumulative giving. You have reached what is considered level one major donor. Beyond that levels two, three, and four are additional diamond um, studs in there. Um, this is sort of like your first significant, um, uh, it's all significant, I shouldn't say that that way. But this is the first major milestone in terms of major donor giving within the Rotary um, world. Beyond that, we've got the Arch Clump Society. This is when your cumulative donations uh, exceed $250,000. And there are numbers of levels within the Arch Clump Society. And beyond the Arch Clump Society, there is also the Legacy Society. So that is a promise within your estate planning of a gift of a million dollars or more to the endowment fund. So when we talk about foundation, we all know the areas that the foundation focuses on. And we know also that this year there's an additional one, the seventh one supporting the environment that's been approved and it's been added into it. So that's where the bulk of the money goes in the foundation. We also know that there are specific funds such as the fight to end polio, the peace centers and so forth. Um, the annual fund and share is what often gets the focus because as we know in the district, every three years, it's on a rolling cycle, all the funds that are raised that go into the annual fund or share are split out 50% to the districts that raise those monies. So if for example, a million dollars was uh, raised in district 7020, in three years time, we would expect to see $500,000 plus or minus coming back into the district. But the, the interesting thing about the foundation is that, that 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 beast needs to be fed constantly. The endowment is slightly different. The capital funds, the, 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 the money that you give to the endowment fund is never spent, that is invested. And it is only the interest off that money that goes into the areas of focus. So, why would you support the endowment fund? Well, you continue a hundred year legacy within Rotary. You know that Rotary has done good in the world for over a hundred years and supporting the endowment fund and knowing that your gift is not a rolling gift, but one that's going to be giving forever. You are contributing to ensuring a solid future for Rotary well into the future. You're able to give a gift, a, a legacy of your love. So a bequest commitment, something that you're making a commitment for some point in the future in your estate plans enables you to make a statement of your support for Rotary well beyond your lifetime. And there are products that maybe aren't as familiar out in the Caribbean, but a product such as the Named Endowed Fund that we'll touch on that allows you to actually name 
yourself, your family, uh, cause as a fund that generates in perpetuity a, a sum of money that is always given in your name well into the future. These are pretty exciting things from where I sit, like to be able to express your love of Rotary forever and ever is just an incredible thing. We love Rotary's annual fund. We love the foundation because you get to see that gift that we make in action. We know that this year when your foundation person comes around and you make that commitment and uh, perhaps uh, go forward and donate another Paul Harris uh, fellow, you are knowing that in three years time, a portion of that is coming back to the district. But the part that's not coming back to the district, you know the work that's doing around the world and it's incredible work. But for me, as I've mentioned, the foundation, the endowment fund of the foundation takes it a bit further. It spreads that impact forever. It produces that steady stream of financial support. In 2019, that amounted to approximately $18 million on around $440 million that's invested. So it returns about 4.2%. If you look at that over the last two decades, the annualized return over two decades is about 4.2% that money is continually being reinvested in the future of Rotary's foundation and the work that the foundation is doing. I think that's incredibly powerful. This is what I was mentioning, the $25,000 gift as a named endowed fund. That yields approximately 1,000 US dollars based on that around 4.2, 4.3% annualized return. So essentially your gift is returning a Paul Harris fellow in your name to the specific cause that you are passionate about within the seven areas of focus or another area every year forever. I think that's a truly incredible thing. I believe in the Caribbean, it's perhaps not as popular, um, but it is more popular in areas where there's a tax incentive to charitable giving, where that is not such a feature of our, 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 our tax jurisdictions, perhaps. Uh, maybe that's a little harder for, for folks to do. But this is a really incredible um, gift opportunity. But why would you give? So for me, it's accountability. We know that the Rotary Foundation is one of the top rated foundations in the world, bar none. It is right up there. Its costs are about the lowest anywhere and it has a four-star charity navigator rating. You know that we partner with organizations around the world, so we're not trying to do it all alone. We work with many, many organizations around the world and it's proven successful, mainly because we're not kind of fixing problems that we think should be fixed. We're working with people on the ground. Often we're working with Rotarians on the ground and others to address the problem in a sustainable way. So we see that now in Haiti with hand wash. We are not going into Haiti and telling them what we think they need building what we think will work for that need that we've developed in our minds, then taking the really cute Instagram photograph and uh, flying out. That's not what it's about. It's a long period of understanding in conjunction with the local communities, as well as the government, exactly what is the need, how that can be addressed, and then working with them to deliver that product and make sure that it's sustainable so that it can be maintained, it can go on for in, into the future and can be reinvested. That is a feature of work that Rotary does. And it, to me, it's a huge reason why if I'm giving money now that is gonna be spent in the future, I know it's gonna be well spent and well taken care of. I wanna just play a very quick video. Hopefully you hear the sound. It's a uh, kind of Russian roulette with Zoom, whether people can hear a sound or not. You're a Leewood. You know what that means? We work hard and we give back. <laughs> you know, someday this apple tree will be bigger than I am. We're leaving the future behind today. You'll see. Giving to Rotary's endowment ensures life-changing programs will benefit generations to come. Your legacy is Rotary's promise.
So all of what I've talked about is fantastic. I know you're absolutely sold. And if you've not already done so, you're, you're, you're looking for the uh, donation button on RI or pulling out your checkbook if we still have those. Mm -hmm. You want to know how to get started. So apropos to the video that we just saw, the best time to plant that tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. And that's my message to get across. Don't ever think that it is too late to get started. I'm here to talk about endowment fund and it also always says major gifts. At the end of the day, any gift given in love is a major gift. My main focus is to make sure that people have a, have a spirit in them to give to the foundation. And if they also think the work in the foundation into the future is an important thing, than to the endowment fund. So in my wildest dreams, I didn't think I'd be a donor to the Rotary Foundation um, uh, on a major level. I, I knew I would give something, but that was something that the big guys did. Um, my personal story was a friendly competition between myself and the president that immediately preceded me at my club. And we both committed that we would do the Paul Harris Fellow annually for 10 years. And I came home all excited to tell my wife about this when I realized that that is a mistake. You should always consult your, your wife on issues uh, such as a 10 year commitment uh, like this. So I've not done that again, um, but I was only, uh, you know, I, I joined Rotary when I was 25, 26 years old and I don't know what to 1995 would have put me, but um, at the end of the day, I'm not here to say that that was an easy thing to do for the 10 years, but it is something that somehow I managed to scrape together and do it. And that was in the days back when it wasn't so easy to donate. You had to find that quiet guy who had been the foundation director probably for the last six or seven years and sort of came out of the woodwork every once in a while. And then you had to figure out how to do a wire transfer. And now it is so easy, but I'm not discounting the fact that what ultimately amounts to 20 US dollars a week is in relative terms, often a huge amount of money for some. But what I would say to you today on this call is don't do nothing at all because $1,000 is too much. Do 500, do 250, do 100, do something and start. Consider legacy giving. A bequest society membership or sort of that bequest society level one, that's an opportunity now where you're in a very simple form that is transmitted straight to RI, you detail that you would like to make a financial gift to the endowment fund. You do not send, you don't have to send that through your club. It doesn't, the, the district doesn't get involved in that. It's a super simple form that will be included in an email that I'll send out to all of your members this evening that includes this form and some other documentation. And if you're so moved, you do that. I did it probably 10 years before I finally completed a will uh, at some point last year. The two have nothing to do with each other. It is obviously a lot safer for, um, for the funds um, and the commitment you've made to detail that in writing, but it's the, the two are sort of separate. And the other thing I'll say based on some feedback that uh, I got early on is no one from the district, no one from your club, no one from RI is ever gonna be calling your estate, your family and asking about this commitment you made. We are Rotarians. If you make this commitment, we would anticipate that you would detail it in some way. Obviously, the most preferential is in a will, but you would detail it in some way to someone that you trust that this is your intention. And here's the document that I sent into RI committing to this. We're not hounding you for these funds. But to me, that's a, a fantastic way of giving um, and, and creating a legacy. Um, and so I would just, uh, again, mention that one. The named endowed fund we've touched on, I won't dwell on that. But the main thing I'll say is to start. Check with your club foundation or your endowment chair and ask them to double check and see where you are with every Rotarian every year. Um, I know that in every club, not everyone signs up for it, but it's an easy thing to do. Sustaining member, I think it's sometimes called or used to be called, but you can add an amount of money, typically a hundred US dollars a year onto your annual RI dues, and it just slowly builds up. Another thing I'd encourage you to do is to go onto myrotary.com and check the My Donations dropdown and take a look at your donor history report. It's uh, easy to read report that shows exactly where you are in various areas of 
foundation giving. And it is surprising how many people realize they are you know, within striking distance of that major donor status. Check it out and see where you are. And if you're there and you're able to do it in these challenging times, topping that off, that's an awesome thing for your club, for you, for your district. It's, it's truly cool. MyRoadReady.com is also really, really easy nowadays to donate to the fund. It used to be very challenging, as I mentioned, but now on the homepage of uh, the Rotary website, you'll see a donate tab. And within there, you could just go across one or two tabs to the endowment or share section. I would say if you're so moved to donate, donate to any of those uh, areas. But for the purposes of this conversation, if you go to the endowment and share section, you know that it's going to the endowment fund and that eventually when that interest is earned and being spent, it's being shared back in some portion to your district. It's really easy on that, by the way, to set up. It doesn't have to be a $1,000 one-time donation. It can be any amount. It can be a recurring. It can be, you know, 250 a, a, a quarter, 250 a year. It can be however you want to set it up. But finally, I would also say, if you haven't already done it, set up a will and include that bequest commitment to the uh, endowment fund. So hopefully you've got an understanding of the gifts and understanding of different types of gifts, how they're recognized and some idea how you can uh, live, give within your means right now. You've got some thoughts in mind, how you can plan that legacy giving and some quick tips on donating easily. This is a quote by Bobby Bodden. He was past district governor many years ago, famous for his quips and one-liners. This one really sat with me. Do your giving while you're living so you'll be knowing where it's going. We know the work that the Rotary Foundation does in our district. We know what it does often in our own backyards. We know what it does in our zone and we know what it does around the world. If you've got the ability to give, for me, it seems an absolute no brainer to give to the Rotary Foundation because you are giving it to a cause that you know exactly how it's spent. But also if you make that commitment for the future by adding it into the endowment fund as opposed to the annual fund, you're knowing where that funding is going in perpetuity. And I think that's a truly remarkable thing. So within a very short, almost offhand quip by Bobby, there's so much to unpack. And I, I, it, it has really driven me over, over the last 10 plus years when I first heard this. So with that, I'll just um, open the floor to any questions. I'll just quickly stop the sharing here. And thank you so much for your attention and welcome any questions. Sorry, I can't. Thank you. Thank you, David, for your presentation. Uh, anybody who would like to ask a question, just unmute yourself or raise your hand so we can. Oh, that is Irma, we cannot hear you. Anyone with any questions on the presentation? Yes, I have a question. I see yes. Bernadette and Cookie also waving their hands. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay. I, I couldn't see all of them. Okay, go ahead, Angela. Okay, David, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, it's something we have heard already before, and I'm glad that you strengthened it further to us. My question is, as a Paul Harris Society member, how can you transform that into a benefactor? Okay, so I... I will answer that question in the follow-up email because I, I would need to double check whether the Paul Harris Society earmarks those funds only to the foundation, the, the general foundation, or if you can earmark the Paul Harris Society funds to the endowment fund. And I suspect it is to the, the, the general foundation only, sort of the, the annual fund is I believe where the Paul Harris Society um, contributions go. Um, I will get the answer for that and 
add it to the email that I will send out. If that's okay. okay with you. Um, yes, but as I'm thinking that if you are contributing to the Paul Harris Society for a further 10 years, then you would be at least um, level one as an uh, endowment fund. Uh, you would be a level one major donor to okay. the Paul, to the to the uh, Rotary Foundation, not necessarily to the endowment fund of the Rotary Foundation. Okay. And that's what I just need to clarify. You may have to specify that if it's even possible um, when you make that annual um, donation. Obviously, being part of the Paul Harris Society, there's not like it, you still have to actively contribute those funds every year. Um, but in the contribution of those funds, I'm not sure if you have much say in where they go. Um, and that's what I'm going to find out for you. So. I will get the answer before I send out that email. Okay, another one, May, just I have a question. The legacy given, for instance, you have um, contributed to a will and, yeah. um, ex and have changed your mind after, after um, contributing to the will or, or, or have an agreement with a will after five years, you change your mind, what happens? I mean, again, we're Rotarian. So is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? If you have made a commitment for a Bequest Society level one and you've received the pretty round pin and you've got a piece of crystal that's now sitting in your home somewhere, if I did that, I, I couldn't live with myself without returning those things and just 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 saying I, I, I cannot make this commitment I, a, I either I don't know that, that the funds are actually there or I need to direct them somewhere else uh, you just need to I mean but it's life you know these things happen and you just need to go and talk to your your um, AG or reach out to whoever is in my position if, if that were uh, the case but honesty and just being straight up is always the best thing what, what you don't want to do is to know in your heart that that's something that's no longer there and continue to, you know, to, to wear the insignia and be perhaps recognized as such. Do you know if any of this has been done previously? I do not know this. Okay. In fact, it's very, very hard for me to find out um, because of privacy reasons and a whole raft of other reg uh, legislation around the world not the least of which is in the United States, but also our different territories. I, you know, I, I, I cannot tell who has given, I, I, I know who is a, you know, a level one this or a level two that, but I don't know specifically how much they're giving is. And certainly when it comes to um, the quest stuff, that none of that is in any document that I can get, nor is it even available to my RI contact that I relied on a lot in putting together my presentation. It's just not information that, that is shared. That is between you and a commitment you've made. So thank you very much. Somebody who may have, uh, who may know now that they're going to ultimately renege on a commitment, we would have no idea. And I wouldn't dwell on that. That's Thanks. something that they have to live with. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Bernadette, you had a question? Yes, hi, good evening, David. Thank you again for that presentation. Um, I'm a little confused still between the endowment and the foundation. Am I understanding that if you contribute, the, the money is raised in the foundation, uh, that, that part of that does not come back to the district and it's only the endowment that comes back to the district? No, um, and it is a very confusing topic. Um, so the, the endowment fund is a part of the foundation. Um, okay. I don't know how it's all accounted for in the big black book up at uh, RI headquarters, but it is part of the Rotary Foundation. The difference is, is that the, the endowment, any money that is contributed and earmarked to the endowment, none of the principal of that money is ever spent. That money just... Okay slowly builds and builds and builds with a goal to it being in the billions eventually so that a stream of revenue comes off that funds foundation activities. The annual fund 
if the Rotary Club of Grand Cayman, my club gives $10,000 in a year, one of the selling features of, of doing the, the, the drum drumming around for the funds that we might do is making sure that the members understand that 50% of that money is, is coming back into our district. It probably won't come to the Cayman Islands because we're, you know, we're terrible about doing uh, grants um, and the perception perhaps is that there isn't as much need, although there is, but there are definitely 50% of that money is coming back into our district. Okay. However, I would say that it gets very nuanced when you donate into the foundation. If you go onto that website and I encourage you to do it, you can run through a good chunk of it without ever having to commit to anything just to familiarize yourself with it. But you'll see that there are so many different avenues that the funding can go. And one of them say like Polio Plus gets a ton of attention, but but Polio Plus is 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 within striking distance of not being a thing anymore that's it's not yet and it's a, it's a tricky tricky thing to to get to that last mile but it's very close to coming to the end so certainly when people give a significant amount of money to the endowment fund and they say they want to earmark those funds specifically to polio eradication they are often encouraged not to do so because it becomes very difficult then when their bequest was to go to polio eradication and in 20 years time, there is no polio to eradicate. And your, their, their written instruction was to spend the money there. So there are lots of nuances to this as you get in, but very simply for me, I give to two different areas. I either go on and I'm gonna give to the um, annual fund slash share, because I know that that money, a, a, a good amount of it is coming back into the district, or I'm gonna give it um, into the endowment fund and it's, it's, I think online it's listed as endowment slash share, because I know that if, eventually when that money comes back out as interest, a portion of that that's attributable to my district will also come back into my district. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bernadette. I think Cookie and then Imtiaz after that. Cookie? Thank you, President. Good evening to everyone. Uh, Wonderful presentation, Mr. David. I believe the same program was presented to us by one of the past AG some years ago. And at that moment, he gave an example of instead of putting cash, you can do an insurance. I, at that moment, I had understood very well about it, but I have again forgotten. Could you just uh, revise that part of it? Sure. How, my, how can I do an insurance and uh, the, the beneficiary will be the Rotary Endowment Fund or something, and I'll be the member of the society and all that? Okay, sorry, I just had to... What am I getting two sounds here? Can everybody hear me okay? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I just had to plug in my computer. It had uh, told me I had one minute or it would be turning off. Um, so insurance is an interesting one. Um, insurance is a possibility. And there is a, uh, there are a number of people in the Bahamas, for example, who have used this as a method of doing a, um, a bequest society level two, for example. So I think uh, $25,000. The way they have structured it, it is a life insurance policy, a whole life insurance policy but they make it in one payment. And what that sort of insulates from is again, the issue that um, I'm not sure if it was Angela mentioned, what happens if I stop payments on my insurance policy sort of five years in and it lapses. So the commitment that was there, the thing that I got recognized for lapses with it. Um, so the trick with the insurance is a number one, it most certainly couldn't be a, a term life policy because we'd be betting against you at that point. Um, and I need to get more detail on how you could structure life insurance again around this issue of the potential of it lapsing. This is a program that there's a club in Nassau that I spoke to that there's a lady that has worked on this. She's in the insurance industry and she and I are trying to connect to understand the program they have and what I'm, my, 
ultimate goal is to make it agnostic to the different countries and the different legal systems and insurance regulations and present a template that you can then take to your local insurance industry and make it work for you because they are finding out, they are figuring it out, uh, they have figured out how to make it work in, in this club in Nassau and they're just starting to get it rolling. And I don't, I don't want it to be just Nassau and I'm, I, I, I don't want Rotary to keep reinventing the wheel everywhere. If they've got a thing that, a product that works, I want to do it because what a ter what an easy way to uh, to do that giving um, uh, you know, on a more significant level. But again, if you be patient on that one, I'm sure you're going to see a bit more on that in the in the coming months. Okay. Sorry, who asked that question? So I could just quickly jot down. Uh, what was that who asked, who asked that question? Just so I can jot down the name. Cookie Siddharth Vigilani. Okay, thank you. I have a second question. Yes, go ahead. Um, as far as I recollect, uh, when I was the president in 2007, I believe from that year or the year before, we've been contributing to every Rotarian every year. And I don't know if our books will show that, but uh, is there a way to get that, those details from the Rotary organization? Absolutely. If you go on to your myrotary.com and log in, go to um, your account, there's a drop down box where you can click on my donations and you can print out a donor history report, which will include all the contributions you've done to every Rotarian every year. No, or... we have done as a club, uh, well, as not a club. as an individual. As a club, it has gone. Mm. Like, um, like, uh, like uh, every time when we go to the pets, the last question is they uh, ask the presidents to confirm how much are you going to uh, uh, supporting for this year? And uh, what I recollect, every year of our presidents who have gone have at least committed $2,000 for the year. So if I take into that, it's like seven, eight years or 10 years. So we must have given at least $20,000. And I would like to just know if those are there in the account or how to check it. And might be, uh, can that get any recognition to our club? Angela? You're on mute. Yeah. Angela, on mute, you Angela. have to unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry. I think I can assist you with that cookie because those donations belong to the members. And at one point, they were distributed to the members. So it is in your account. That donation is Paul Harris. That donation belonged to each member because they contributed the funds that, that was earmarked that's for Paul that Harris, year. That's Paul Harris money. I'm talking oh. about the other uh, commitment that we do at PETS. The commitment that we normally do at PETS, it's every Rotarian every year. Yeah. And that is what you call the, the, the Paul Harris. No, it belongs to each member. I'm happy to help out, but it okay. sounds like this may be a specific club thing uh, as how you- Yeah, possibly it. club thing. Let's, let's, let's look into that. I believe something is wrong here. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Sorry, I wasn't able to help more fully on that one. Thank you. Imtaz, your question, please. Hi, good evening, everyone. I think Angela may have uh, touched on what I wanted to find out, so I am okay there. Okay. Any other Seymour. questions? Seymour. Seymour. Yeah. Oh, Seymour. Yes, good afternoon. Good night, um, Rotary and David. Is it possible to make a contribution in terms of, let's say, in their will to leave land to the foundation? Is that possible? Uh, it is possible. Um, it is not something that is easily managed by 
I would say like myself or your local resources. I think if that is the intent of one of your members or it doesn't even have to be a member. I mean, these things can all be non-Rotarians um, as well. But if that is the intent of somebody and that is something that they would like to do, it is possible, but that is something that would have to be coordinated with our eyes. Um, uh, uh, there's a specific there's specific folks at, at RI that, that would assist in that because it, it is much more complicated and it will involve some legal work again to ensure that that can't be transferred or um, documenting it. Thank but, you. But things like, um, things like dwellings that have sort of like a, a rentable income on it, for example, that, that's, that's something they would stay away from. Thank you, AG. Any other question? I think that's it. Thank you very much, David. That was very, very informative. Um, what for foundation all this in is fascinating to me because no matter how much you know, there's more to know. And the more you know, there's more to know. So thank you very much. Thank you, Angela as well, our foundation chair. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of Sunrise and our guests, thank you again. Thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Chris, yes. I have one more, I have one more. Um, <laughs> there was a special, there was a special not too long ago that was put forward where you pay 500 and you get 500 in credit. Is that over? I know that it, I know that it was up to a certain number, a uh, dollar value, and oh. I'm not sure if it's been fully subscribed. I don't believe it has been fully subscribed. I have a member in my club that has been asking uh, PDG Patrick um, repeatedly for the answer to this, and asked me to ask Patrick, and it's now been mm -hmm. it's been a while. I have not gotten a clear answer on it, um, but I will push again. Uh, but I believe that is something that may be best addressed through your foundation person to uh, perhaps the district governor just to see where that is. The one thing I would say, you touch on a thing where that was giving 500 and you would end up with a Paul Harris fellow through 500 points that would be donated uh, to top it off. Um, points do not uh, accrue towards any major giving. So I know in, oh. in some of the clubs in the Cayman Islands, it's quite common for example, like the um, outgoing president might be given a Paul Harris fellow by the club, but the club didn't pay a thousand dollars. They they used points that the club had, or maybe a person within the club has achieved a number of points and they'll use that. Those do not accrue towards a major donor status. And that can sometimes okay. surprise surprise people when they think they're when they think they're that close, but uh, one or two of them may have been gifts. Yes. Um, can I add to that? At our last assistant governor's meeting, it was still available, but again, it was on a first come, first of basis. So I don't know if they have met the quota or not. But as of, I say, four weeks ago, it was still in effect. But Bernadette, if it has, if the quota has been met, what I would suggest to you is you do the 500 this year and you do the 500 next year and you're good to go. <laughs> Thank you for that. Any other questions? All right. <laughs> Thank you again, David, very, very, very much. Uh, we have we have a lot of um, curious members. We love them. We love you, Sunrisers. I'm going to go ahead to our upcoming events. We have a board meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. The link will be sent tomorrow. Then next week, Wednesday, we have a presentation by our Cookie Vigilani on how to operate Club Runner. I know he has helped a couple of members already, but this is going to be a general presentation for everyone. Because there's always, even like the Club Runner has actually upgraded a couple of months ago, and they have a couple of changes. So it is very nice to just learn the new little tricks that they have. And with that, I'm going to open the floor for anyone 
who would like to say something. Our guest, we would love to have our guest say something. AG Seymour, maybe? Yeah, like to... Yes, on, be, on behalf of our district governor, I'd like to thank you, President Darley, for arranging, and our Rotarian Angela, for arranging this informative presentation by our own Rotarian David. This is, these are things that we need to encourage our Rotarians to know what Rotary is all about. And most Rotarians will ask, well, I'm giving, but what do I get in return? Uh, where do my money go? So again, I, I'm glad that uh, Rotarian David was, uh, Assistant Governor David was uh, able to, you know, highlight where some of this money, these monies are going and how much it comes back to our district. I know um, DGE Louis is looking at monies that was donated three years ago to the um, foundation will be coming in during his year um, as um, district governor. So again, the more you give, the more you'll receive in three years. So again, I'll encourage all Rotarians who are listening to continue to give in whatever way you think possible, whatever you can afford. Um, whether it's the Every Rotarian Every Year or the Bequest Society, just try and give to the Rotary Foundation. It is one of, it is the best run organization in the world. Thank you. Thank you, AG. Carol, what would you the floor is yours. I just wanted to say thank you for including me again. It's always nice to see all of you and I, I hope I can make it there in March. <laughs> it's always fantastic to have you, all our returning guests. It's really, really good to see everyone. You know, it's like a family, so it's always like a little celebration every time we meet. And we really do hope to see you. And ho hopefully by then we will have face-to-face -face meetings and that would make a lot of difference as well. We're, we're doing, we do have face-to-face -face meetings here, but we have to social distance and masks and so it's, it's summer coming and we're still, we're doing a combination of face-to-face -face and Zoom. Yeah, we, we are hoping to start that soon too. So we're just waiting to see what happens. President Dolly, Cookie, want to say something? Okay, yes, Cookie. I, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Katura D. Weaver, who has been a member of our club many years ago. Katura, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Cookie. Welcome. It's, a pleasure, it's a pleasure for me to see all guest faces, and it was really nice that Angela invited me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, food for the thought. I have a question. I, I attended a meeting yesterday of the mid Isle Club, and I put forth this question over there. I'm going to be putting here again. Uh, Mr. David, how long have you been a Rotarian? You're on mute. 25 years. Uh, can you tell me how many Rotarians are in the world when you joined Rotary and now? Well, they're probably less now, unfortunately. It's around uh, 1.3 million, 1.2 million. That's right. Uh, 15 years, I'm also a member. When I join in, I used to hear the numbers 1.2 million. Today, again, I checked it online just to reconfirm, it's 1.195 million, like 5,000 less members. It's mind boggling for me. What is the reason that our membership cannot grow? Is it the classifications are too tough? Are the regulations what we are putting to like only you can invite a Rotarian? Is it because of that? Why are we not growing in number? Or is it is it the point that they are happy to be 1.2 million from last 20 years? It's just mind boggling. I, it, I, I'm just thinking like any other organization or any other club, whatever we talk about besides Rotary, the numbers are growing, but why are our numbers not growing? 
um, Cook here can answer okay, part yeah. of it. I, I can answer a little part of it. Oh, good. We, Go like, ahead. like all our sure, reasons, anybody can answer. Yeah. Again, I, I, I'm not an expert, but some of the reasons are the re, some of the reasons when someone comes in, they're not being satisfied in terms of what they expected or what was promised. But other organizations are suffering the same feat. And I can even mention in, in our churches. Our churches are going through the same thing. Our numbers are dwindling. Um, uh, other, I'm involved in other service organizations. We are going through the same thing.